Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Rani. I'm an integrative ophthalmologist and welcome back to my five part series on macular degeneration. Uh, today in video number four, I'm gonna be explaining to you about the risk factors for macular degeneration. But in case you missed any of my previous videos, please go back and take a listen. Um, in video number one, I explained about what macular degeneration is and how it affects the back of the eye. In video number two, I talked about the two categories of macular degeneration, there's dry and there's wet. In video number three, I talked about what the symptoms of macular degeneration may be depending on which stage of the disease one has. And today in video number four, again, I'm gonna be talking about risk factors. So the way I think about risk factors for macular degeneration, I like to think of them in two buckets, two categories. First, the first category is things that we cannot control, things that we cannot modify, basically our genetics. The second category is things that we can control, things that are modifiable, basically uh, things within our environment or our lifestyle or nutrition choices. That's called our epigenetics. So first let's talk about the things that we cannot control. Well, in terms of genes associated with macular degeneration, there are over 50 genetic variants that have been linked to macular degeneration. The truth is that what most of those genes actually do the scientific community still does not understand. We have a sense of some of those genes. For example, uh, there's, there are some genes that are linked to in the inflammatory pathways. There are other genes that are linked to energy production and metabolism. There are other genes linked to lipid or fat metabolism, and still others that are linked to new blood vessel formation. But for the vast majority of genes that are associated with macular degeneration, we don't fully understand what they do. However, um, I do want to point out that uh, even though one may have a genetic risk factor for macular degeneration, you know, let's say you've done 23andMe or Ancestry.com or perhaps another home genetic test and it says that you have a gene for macular degener degeneration, it does not mean that macular degeneration is your destiny. It does not mean that you are destined to uh, eventually develop drusen and lose vision and go blind. There are many other factors that play roles. So um, that's, genes are, the genetic variants are basically the, the most important of those non-modifiable risk factors, but there are some other non-modifiable risk factors we should be aware of as well. So age is a main risk factor as well for macular degeneration. Macular degeneration is also called age-related macular degeneration, or AMD for short. And we know that the older one is, the higher one's risk for developing macular degeneration. For example, if someone is in their 50s, their risk of macular degeneration is fairly low, perhaps less than 2%. However, if they're older, let's say they're in their 70s, that risk goes up to almost 30%. And with each decade, the risk goes higher and higher. However, Age, is, again, is not the only risk factor. There are plenty of patients who are older in their 70s, 80s, 90s, and above who have no macular degeneration whatsoever. So age is not the only risk factor. Um, another non-modifiable risk factor is sex. We know that females are at higher risk for macular degeneration than males. Why is this? Well, some people have theorized that it's because women live longer, they have a higher life expectancy than men, that's why they're at higher risk, but that's not the end of the story either because there are plenty of men who also live longer and they do not develop macular degeneration. So age and sex are not the only risk factors. Perhaps there's another component, maybe there's a hormonal component, we don't fully understand that. And then the last, I would say the last major type of non-modifiable risk factor is pigmentation. So we know from many population studies that people who have lighter pigmentation, lighter skin pigmentation, lighter hair, lighter eyes, are at higher risk for macular degeneration. Now why is this? Well, it's theorized that when one has lighter pigmentation, they also have less pigment in the back of their eye, in the retina. And so that is, uh, it doesn't give them the uh, same protection against oxidative stress or light-induced oxidative stress that others may have with more pigment. So pigment also plays a role in macular degeneration. So again, that's the category, those are the buck that's the bucket that has all those non-modifiable risk factors. But what I really like to focus on are the modifiable risk factors. Again, you may have certain non-modifiable risk factors, but that does not mean that you are destined to lose vision. We have to really consider all of these other modifiable risk factors. So Basically, it's the nature versus nurture theory. So we can do things, we can change things in our choices, in our lifestyle choices, in our nutrition choices to decrease our risk of macular degeneration. So what are some of these non, uh, sorry, these modifiable risk factors? The number one modifiable risk factor is smoking. 
And we know this based off of several important twin studies that were done in which one twin smoked and the other twin did not smoke. And we know that the twin who smoked had a much higher risk of developing macular degeneration and vision loss from macular degeneration. So smoking cessation is recommended as a as modulating one's uh, modifiable risk factors. Other modifiable risk factors include obesity and increased waist circumference, also lack of exercise, lack of regular exercise, also diets that are low in certain important eye health nutrients and high in pro-inflammatory types of foods. So those are all, again, they have to do with our, our choices that we make in our daily lives. What are we choosing to eat? How are we choosing to live? So those are, again, our modifiable risk factors. And if you want to learn more about these risk factors and how we can perhaps decrease our risk for macular degeneration based off of the modifiable risk factors, please um, consider signing up for my free webinar, the Macular Degeneration Masterclass. The link is below, so please sign up. Um, and in that webinar, I explain what the three critical strategies are to help protect eyesight from macular degeneration, basically how to modulate some of those modifiable risk factors. So uh, that's it for today's video, video number four. Um, so stay tuned for my next video, video number five, in which I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about preventative strategies for macular degeneration. So I hope to see you in the next video.